Co-op games have spawned some of the most memorable gaming moments for me personally, but I don't know about you, finding good cooperative games to play with friends can be pretty challenging. So let me do a little bit of the legwork for you and totally use this as an excuse to talk about my favorite co-op games. And whilst we're at it, why not rank them 1 through 25 to add a little bit of extra spice to the video. Coming in at 25, GTFO is best summed up as a claustrophobic stealth-based action horror FPS game where you'll descend into underground labyrinths full of narcoleptic, psychotic humanoid creatures that are hibernating and will fly into an absolute frenzy like their neighbor fired up a lawnmower at the crack of dawn on a Sunday after a big night out if you so happen to disturb them. Difficult, tense, and full of required communication, this game balances stealth and action on the tip of a knife's edge, probably on account of the fact that you'll be poking the beehive if you make the slightest bit of noise or shine your light at the wrong mutant. The Outlast Trials is a new entry into the co-op horror genre, which I have to say is truly an untapped market. Gracing early access in 2023, it takes the signature frantic night vision filled horror of the Outlast series and jams you in there with three other unfortunate fortunate souls. The good old Murkoff Corporation is back and running a bit of a forceful experiment to ascend humans to the next stage, which apparently they plan to achieve by drilling some goggles to your head, giving you a room to sleep in, and sending you off on your way through nightmare fueled rodeos. Despite its relative lack of content in early access, it instantly cements itself as one of the best co-op horrors in the genre. Gotta love living out your own Castlevania story under the shackles of the pale moonlight, or stay out a bit too late and burst into flames under the morning sun. Yep, vampires. Gotta love them, and V Rising is full of them. You'll awaken as a malnourished bloodsucker before building up your own castle, hunting down strong foes to take their strength, and just generally putting the local human populace under your thumb in the process. If you like survival games, this one was a blast and offers you a Dracula fantasy on a silver platter because it's full of danger. Apparently the top of this list is full of spooky nighttime adventures and that one's continuing onward with Phasmophobia. There's something equally charming and almost terrifying about this rough around the edges ghost hunter in which your friends often send you off to your imminent paranormal demise that you are helpless to do anything about. Oh, Pez, it is opening and- <laughs> It really captures that ghost hunter show you'd see on late night TV, and then plops it into a game which is made a lot more fun from the safety of your gaming chair. There are a ton of games worth mentioning in this genre, such as Demonologist, but this is the one that spawned them all and it's still sitting pretty at the top. To finally change the pace from vampires, ghosts, and man-eating psychos to something a little bit more scary, love. Castle Crashes is a wild hack and slash 2D adventure all about defending your beloved kingdom and trying to find your beloved. It's a great romp and really captures that classic arcade feeling with its often goofy quick paced fights and really Shrek like energy on your mission to find the princess. It's just an overall great brain dead time to play with your friends. When I think of games that are in the speedrun fighting with a friend any percent, I quickly turn to Operation Tango. As the name suggests, it takes two to dance as you master the art of espionage and intelligence. One member of the team will be on ground zero, whilst the other will be at a remote location, guiding you and hacking their way through the target, with a voice link being the only thing keeping you both together. Channel your inner 007 and get into this one. It also features a friend pass, meaning only one of you need to buy it, and better yet, it also has co-op between PC and consoles. Pretty good. If your thing happens to be making massive sprawling factories full of conveyor belt spaghetti to pump out tons of random objects whilst pillaging alien planets of all its natural resources, Sources, and scarring a portion of it beyond a recognition, then Satisfactory is the game for you. To me, in a way, it's the modernized spiritual successor to Factorio and is absolutely an awesome time sink of a game that will have you scratching that little optimization part of your brain as you fumble around to make the best factory you can. Whoever decided to make Jump King co-op by having two adorable penguins tie themselves together and tasking them to go up a mountain knew exactly what they were doing. Bread and Fred is a relationship dismantling gem of a game that is simple and brutally effective in its highs and very unfortunate lows that see you face planting off the side of a cliff together. This game requires coordination, cooperation, along with timing and finesse, which makes it just a great time overall. Its only downside right now is its lack of online play. However, that can be remedied with Steam Remote Play, which does get the job done well enough. Time to embody nobody and do heroic shape-shifting shenanigans in Nobody Saves the World 
world. Roguelite action wrapped up in a neat form changing mechanic combined with pretty customizable builds. That nets you this fun little co-opable adventure that is just full of polish and charm. In a way it harkens back to games such as the 2D Zeldas but with its own flavor and offers a lot of options in its roguelike mix and match nature. I pretty much recoiled in horror when somebody told me that this game was Dark Souls with guns which is unfortunately probably the easiest way to actually describe Remnant from the Ashes. Despite the term Souls-like beginning to mean less and less to me, it combines third-person shooting with all the usual Souls suspects. You know, dodging, healing, uh, bosses, health bars, checkpoints that do checkpoint things. You see what I mean at this point? Anyway, if you're a fan of putting bullets into enemies that eat them like punches thrown from a toddler, Remnant is unironically quite fun and does offer a really solid time with a decent challenge. We've talked about a few games that can destroy friendships, but don't be fooled by Pico Park's simple look and design. This one was fine tuned in the fuck your friendships lab and was dialed down to the pixel to maximize the emotional damage it could cause. Described as an action puzzle game, the puzzle element is pretty self-explanatory in the objective. Get the key, clear the level. But the action, well, that depends on your temperament. Pico Park is simple, solid, and offers some good brain scratching. If a part of your party perhaps doesn't play a lot of video games, Pico Park is perfect for you. Speaking of games that are easy for non-gamers to get into, but will absolutely make you blow a valve, here's Overcooked 2. A fun, colourful, unassuming game about cooking the meals your customers order in a lovely kitchen that is entirely juxtaposed by its purely chaotic, stressful time management and complete disregard for any health and safety or food hygiene regulations. You'll be tossing meat around the kitchen like a lunatic, flipping tables and probably screaming at your co-workers to wash the damn plates because some evil kitchen designer decided that you could only access half the kitchen. I've always had a soft spot for Hunt Showdown. I genuinely think as far as extraction shooters go, it is one of the best, if not the best. I see him oh, I just headshot him, he's dead! Holy shit! Damn, boy. A dumbed down Tarkov that encapsulates all of its stress by adding in a layer of complete horror. Stalk the Louisiana buyer with late 19th century weaponry and fend off other players and all the hungry, fiendish residents to work your way to the bounty, which also happens to be a monstrous entity that everyone on the map is vying for. This game is a spooky yet really enjoyable shooter that just keeps piling on the intensity, which is only amplified knowing that someone could be watching you and waiting to turn your lights out with a single shot the moment you make a little bit too much noise. I could probably do an entire list on couch co-op games alone, but the one that takes the cake for me personally is Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. It has long since been one of my favorite party games. The setup is simple. One player is trapped with a bomb and they are the only one that can see it. The rest of the players, well, they have the manual required to defuse the bomb. It's a back and forth game of communication to describe the bomb and how to make sure it does not go boom. If you've ever wanted to see how your friends perform under pressure, then this game right here, play it. Human Fall Flat is a charming, wacky, flailing, fun fiasco all about controlling drunken human-shaped sandbags on their quest to solve a multitude of various physics-based puzzles, which works well and good until you add the co-op element. At which point the game essentially becomes Gang Beast styled slapstick improvised wrestling matches fraught with pile drivers and disposing one another over the nearest ledge. It's fun, lighthearted, and engaging. It gives you the keys to unlock that mischievous devil inside of you that really just wants to watch the world burn. Don't Starve Together is easily one of the best co-op survival games out there and hence it graces the 10th spot on this list. It embraces the standard survival tropes of struggling against food, water, the seasons, the darkness, madness, the boogeyman, your own friends tendencies to forget they have an open flame, the other friend's pyromaniac behavior, resource management, base building, getting lost, and murderous frogs that will run your pockets at every chance they get. It's a truly challenging little survival game that does not hold your hand in any way and is well worth the time you spend on it. There's been a lot of discussions about submarines lately and how the deep sea should probably be left alone and all that. Well, Barrow Trauma decides to one-up it all and put you and your friends in a submarine on Jupiter's moon. The pressure cooker of a situation is only amplified by the dangerous beasts trying to get in, the very large dangerous beasts outside, and the whole not knowing if everyone on the sub is here for the exact same reason. You never know, you might just have a trader or two on board which adds a little bit extra 
This game really embraces its inspirations in FTL and RimWorld and is a genuinely excellent co-op survival game wrapped up in a death tube under ungodly amounts of pressure. Seems like we're on a bit of a trend here with Valheim continuing that and taking 8th place. A Viking aged exploration and survival game wrapped in Norse mythology and a whole lot of fun. You'll be proving yourself to Odin by correcting his failures and fighting several bosses, but first you'll need to locate them, probably only after you've spent copious amount of times making your very own catacat with its very fun building mechanics. That is, if you don't first discover the fundamental truth of this game. The trees are your enemies, and they will work together to tag team you to death with their furious domino offense. Okay. Uh, uh, oh, Jesus! Are you okay? Is he okay? Cutting into I don't no. Now, admittedly, I haven't played a lot of Risk of Rain 2, but if you want the very saying of just one more run condensed into a video game, this is probably it, which makes it oh so much worse, considering you can play it with four people. It really shows an understanding of what a good roguelike needs to have, complete and utter control over your sense of time. If you like roguelikes and hate the concept of standing still in video games, then look no further. This satisfying, addicting, and time-distorting alien planet escape combat-filled roguelike is ready to kill you and your time. I don't even know what to say about Project Zomboid. It's a game that you might first look at and say it doesn't seem special, but you'd be oh so wrong. It offers insane depth and storytelling freedom by simply having its players drop into the zombie infested world. It is undoubtedly one of the most comprehensive zombie survival games and offers oh so much to anyone that sinks their teeth into it. This game is definitely not for everyone. It is certainly slow, but oh boy, is it immersive. There's nothing quite like it. Your friend says they'll go off and scavenge a nearby trailer park in 30 minutes later you find them dead but still standing amongst the brainless enemies. Rock and stone will carry you home on good old Deep Rock Galactic. Tunnel through the subterranean caverns in your very own four-player dwarven mining operation with a splash of extra alien bug genocide on the side. Beers, beards, mining, dwarves, war crimes, big old guns. What more do you want, damn it? I personally love this game and as far as four-player co-op games go, this would be the one that I pick. Hence why it's fifth on this list overall. The gameplay loop is addicting. The objectives actually feel like they're worth doing and hanging out with your short, stout, stumpy, bearded bros just doesn't get old. Better yet, you can also grab this one on Game Pass, so uh, get to it. Hazelight Studios really just kind of came out of nowhere with bravado and big words promising a co-op story unlike any we'd ever seen in gaming, and you know what? For once, it wasn't just hot air. In fact, they did it twice. Firstly, of course, with A Way Out. Following along the story of Vincent and Leo, two criminals and unlikely partners currently serving time behind bars that happen to have unfinished business on the outside. A jailbreaking, action-filled, emotion-evoking piece of cinema that will certainly make that cold gamer heart beating inside feel all kinds of emotions. I'm not sure I'll ever forget this game. It was genuinely impressive and an absolute treat to play. You are insane if you think Portal 2 wasn't going to pop up on this list. If we're talking pure game design, this one probably graces first on the list, but this is my list. Valve knows how to make a good game, that's not up for debate, and Portal 2 is excellent, and somehow even better with the co-op edition that is an entirely separate campaign. This game is absolutely timeless, and I doubt many of you don't know it, so there's not much of a need to explain it. But if you're a fan of puzzles and somehow have not played the Portal series, it holds up well and truly even after a decade. Coming in at number 2 is the We Were Here series, truly another game that I have a soft spot for. After being separated from your party, the game's events take place on an icy barren tundra when a mysterious castle invites you in from the cold. Unbeknown to you, you're now entertainment for the castle's denizens. In order to escape, you'll have to work together with a single analog radio connecting the two of you as you share information back and forth to overcome various puzzles in your way. I'm waving at you, over. Oh, you're my best friend. You're my only friend. I love you. What? Nothing. The amount of enjoyment this series has given me is almost unrivaled, and if you have a best friend or a special someone, you should totally play it. And hopefully that relationship still stands afterwards. I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to know what number one is at this point. Hazelight did it again with 2021's Game of the Year It Takes Two, a AAA quality, purely co-op adventure that a lot of people have been waiting for, and truly proof of the demand for more games like this. 
Game devs, get on it, please. You'll play as Cody and May, who are promptly turned into wooden dolls by magic after revealing their divorce to their young daughter. Adventure through the distorted house, the memories the couple shares, and reluctantly work on rebuilding a relationship with a seedy book of love pushing you along the way. The sheer quality and length of this adventure is insane. I just cannot believe they managed to pack so much into this game from the main content to the mini games. It is just an absolute blast and even has a friend's pass, meaning that only one of you needs to buy it. So, uh, get to it. Incredible. And there we are. I hope this list has given you a few games that intrigue you. And likewise, hopefully it gives you a bunch of awesome memories to have with your friends. My main objective with this channel is to get people to connect through video games by removing as many barriers to entry as possible. And with that, I'm Fizz, your local video game dealer. Thanks for watching. I hope I'll see you again soon.